Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this channel. Today we're going to be working on the final part for the Japanese tunnel. This is an environment series that we've been doing for the past couple of um, uh, weeks. I think like one, like six weeks maybe or something like that. We've been going on and on around it. So let me show you where we're at right now. I believe this is the latest one. Yep. Yeah. And uh, today we're gonna work on textures. I'm gonna show you a very cool workflow about how you can create your own like paper textures to get a really, really nice, interesting look. So this is what we have right now. This is the um, the character. We have an AI volume and everything. I'm gonna turn the AI volume off for just a second. And uh, if we do a quick render, this is what we should get. Should be relatively fast because we're not using the fog. The fog really adds like 10 minutes to the whole uh, like processing um, of the scene. So let me pause real quick and I'll show you the result. Oh, actually there it is. There we go. So we have this very cool scene. Again, we're missing a couple of textures and the main textures that I want to work with right now are the paper textures because they look quite nice, like plastered around the, like the tunnel. I can see all of these papers right here are floating a little bit, so we definitely need to fix that. Uh, but one of the things that we definitely need to do is we need to add some like actual paper texture. So we're going to do two things here. I'm actually going to be showing you how we can uh, generate a cool looking texture from this uh, posters, which by the way, I apologize if they say anything that's like wrong or bad. I don't know how to read Japanese. Um, I just looked this up and it was on like on a graphic design uh, page. So we're going to be using this ones right here. And what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go for an old paper texture. And uh, if we look in Google, we're going to find all of this guys right here. Let's use this one, for instance. I'm just going to copy and paste this right here. I'm going to make this way, 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 way bigger. And we're going to multiply this. There we go. We're probably going to lower the opacity a little bit. So I want this to be like sort of like brownish, like a brownish tint, but not so intense. So something like this. And we're literally just going to save this, of course, in our let's go tunnel is fine. Let's say this is a JPEG and we're going to save this as paper color. Hit OK. Now we're actually going to jump into a different uh, software, which is a 3D sampler. We've used this before. We use this a little bit for um, uh, 3D scanning and that uh, we're going to be using it today to generate a texture. Now, before we continue, though, if you are looking for some ZBrush content, we have a great ZBrush pack and go package going on right now. So check this out. Hey, guys, I am super happy to announce that we have a great package for all of you. I know a lot of people want to learn about ZBrush, they want to begin their ZBrush career, and this is the best deal you can get. For the next five days, until March 11, we're gonna have this bundle available through ArtStation. 17 of our best selling courses at an amazing price. We have things like introduction to ZBrush, character likeness, hard surface sculpting, creature creation, 3D printing, and much more. Our best 17 courses are gonna be available at an 80% discount for only $35. The price originally is $180, but we're going to lower all that all the way down to $35. $35 for 17 courses, and you guys are going to get the best possible teaching that you can for Seabrush. This bundle will only be available until March 11th, so for the next five days only, and it's only going to be available through ArtStation. So make sure to check the link down here and become a great 3D artist in no time. There we go. So the reason why I'm showing you that special bundle is, of course, because we have the special promotion going, but also because what we're going to do here can also be used in Seabrush, and I'll show you how, how uh, at the end. So we're here inside of a Substance 3D Sampler, which is one of the softwares from the Substance family. And I'm going to go to this area right here. And the first thing I did, actually, is I went and got like a piece of paper. Let me go full screen. And I just crumbled up like this. I came back here to my desk. I took a picture with the like cleanest light that I could. And it's this one that you can see right here. And then I went into Photoshop and I created a square pattern, this one right here. So if I hit open uh, this image, oh, sorry, let me go back here. So I, this is the original photo and this is the square paper. So I'm just going to open this up. And as you can see, we have a couple of options that we can do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do this image to material. I'm going to make sure that this is set to AI powered because it's going to be using artificial intelligence to find the best possible thing. This is why AI is really powerful. Not everywhere, like the concept stuff, we talked about it. But for this kind of stuff, it's really, really, really good. So I do this. And as you can see, what we're going to get here is we're going to get a generated material with that paper. Look at this. So this is my color map. This is the normal map, which has some really, really nice textures. This is the roughness map. Again, really cool. 
This is the metallic. This is the height. This is the important map because we can actually export this height information into Seabrush and get a really, really, really clean alpha that we can use. A lot of people, when they create alphas inside of Seabrush, and I actually have a video about this, um, a lot of people, when they create alphas, they just go into Photoshop and make a great uh, like image and then just bring it into, uh, or sorry, yeah, and then bring it into Seabrush, and that's horrible. You get like a horrible, horrible effect. But this one right here actually works really, really nicely. Now, um, unfortunately, this is not a tiling material i would need to do a couple more tricks uh to get this into a or to convert this into a tiling uh object ideally you would like to have your original image be tiled so if there's a way you could do that inside of photoshop and then bring it into here you're going to get a, a better result there are some ways in which we can try to make this a uh, tile however for our particular our purpose right now this is more than enough so i'm just going to go to this share button over here i'm going to export as uh we're going to export this into our assets tunnel right here and on the material settings that we're going to be exporting jpeg is it's totally fine i'm going to do arnold 5 because we're going to be using arnold right and i want to export base color normal roughness displacement and mellowness we don't need opacity 2k is perfectly fine and we hit export once this is done if we check the uh the file right here you can see that we have our normal map right here which is really 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 cool information about the normal map we have our base color right here really 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 cool as well uh, a little bit pixelated, but it's fine. The, the size that we're going to be using at it should be perfectly fine. Uh, we have our displacement map and everything. So let me show you, before we jump into Maya, let me very quickly show you how this displacement map is so, so, so good. Uh, it's just going to be something very, very quick. Now, I'm going to go to Photoshop real quick. I'm going to bring my base color into, into Photoshop right here. There we go. Again, there we go. I'm going to shift control U. Actually, it's already it's already like black and white. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna create a sphere real quick, like this default project. Let's give it a couple subdivisions. And if I go here and I change this to rec rect and I go and import the paper uh, tunnel or the paper material, I'm gonna uh, bring in the normal like base color, which is this one right here. If I drag and drop it, as you can see, it's okay, right? Like it looks fine as a, as a texture. Like if I wanted to add like this interesting texture, it would look perfectly fine. We can of course increase the intensity and it's not that bad, but it's very noisy as you can see, very, very, very noisy. So let me go here to subtool. I'm gonna uh, duplicate this. There we go. So this one, the original one is gonna be the, um, the, the normal alpha. Now, if I bring in the height information instead, this one right here, the displacement, Look at the difference. Look at how clean and better these things look. I'm going to do a quick render right here. And you can see how it's pretty much the same image, but we get way, way, way more detail in intensity on this one than what we have on this one. This looks very noisy, very ugly. And this one actually gives us like a displacement of the texture. So whenever you can, it's always better to use a displacement information. Okay. Now let's go here to our element and we need to create a new uh, material. So I'm gonna go to the substance plugin and I'm gonna use this little option right here that allows me to create a material very quickly because I just need to select the maps that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna go to the tunnel and here we go. We have base color, displacement, metalness, so all of this guys. Um, we can actually select multiple maps and let's see if it finds all of them. It found the color, it found the normal, it found the roughness, it found the metals, it did not find the height, which is fine. We actually don't need height information for Maya. It's a very simple object. So we just do this and hit apply. And what this will do is it will create a new material right here. This is AI standard uh, surface nine, or which we're gonna call M paper. And uh, this has all of the information that we need. Like if I were to create, let, let's say a big sphere here at the center, and uh, assign that material, assign existing material and paper, and we render here at the front of the scene, we're gonna have this object, as you can see, we have the texture. Now, what we're gonna do though, is we're actually gonna replace the color information of this paper. So instead of using this color that we have right here, which is just like a basic, basic white color, we're gonna be using our like, like pamphlets uh, color, and we just hit okay. Once we do this, if we render, now we're going to have the, the normal map information of the paper with the textures of this guys right here. So how are we going to be using this with our papers? Well, very, very easily. We're just going to select like a couple of them. Let's say like this guy's right here. And if we go to UVs and UV editor, you're going to see all of these guys already have a UV. <laughs> oh, I'm going to right click and assign the same material. So assign the paper material. 
And if I go here, I should be able to see the image by pressing this button here on my UV editor. I'm going to grab the UV shells, move them to the side, and then just grab one and scale it so that it matches or it captures the size of the element that I want. I'm actually going to remove this thing right here so that we can only see. Actually, that's fine. Can we see both? No. There we go. So we just go right there. Okay, so we capture the UV map on that one. And then we do the same for this one. We're just going to scale this down, scale this in, and capture this like pamphlet right there. And then this one, same deal. Just going to capture this pamphlet right here. One more. We grab this one. Let's capture this one right here. Or we're not capturing. What we're doing is we're mapping, right? We're mapping the texture to a specific space of the UV space like that. And that's it. So now let's uh, say real quick. And if we render again, the papers on the walls, as you can see, will have not only the texture that we're applying, but also the normal map information, the roughness information, all of the information. Sorry if my thing like had a little bit of a hiccup right there. But as I was saying, it's going to have the texture information, the color information, like all of the information that we, uh, we would expect these papers to have, it's going to be there. So as you can see, this is going to give everything a lot more life. So what we can do now is we can actually grab like this guy right here, pressing number six so that we can see the colors. We can press that one right there, for instance, and say, hey, I want this guy to be on like a couple of this guys. So I select this guy and then this guy and we say mesh transfer attributes. And we make sure that we look for topology and we're transferring, uh, like transferring the UV sets. It should work. Did it work? Did it not work? I think it didn't work. Okay, here's another, like an easier way. I'm just going to grab like several of these guys randomly or as randomly as humanly possible. And all of them should have a very similar like UV distribution. Actually, it did transfer the attributes. What didn't happen is we didn't transfer um, the material. So let's go back here. All of these groups, as you can see, they all share the same elements. So I'm just going to right click assign existing material and paper. Right now it's going to look, of course, super ugly. But now that we have this, now, for instance, let's say I, I grab this one right here and I say, okay, I want this one to be right there. And again, we just say mesh and transfer attributes. And it's going to transfer the same thing. And once we do that, we can just press G and G will do the exact same thing. It will transfer the attributes from one to the other. So we just need to grab one of this, go right there. One of this go right there. Let's grab like a different one, like uh, this one right here. And G. But at the same time, it's such a small thing. It's such a small like detail that we might even be able to get away with this. Uh, with just having like random elements because it's, it's again, such a small little detail that you're not even going to know this as much. Uh, the ones that you might notice a little bit more are the ones that are flying around the character. And this do have a slightly different topology, so we can't use the exact same thing. But if we check the UVs, you're going to see that they should have a very clean UV. So if we just grab this guy right here and we say, again, right-click, assign existing material and uh, paper, as you can see, all of them will have the, like, the effect. Right now it looks like really weird. So let's go here. It seems like I need to rotate this guys 90 degrees. I'm going to make them smaller. I'm going to make them a little bit like, kind of want to grab like this one here in the center. So we just grab that one right there. And let's take a look at how this looks. There we go. That is really, really, really freaking cool. So now, again, if we render, let's say real quick, we're going to have this very, very cool effect where all of these papers that are just rolling around have like words in it and it looks more like traditional paper. It might be a little bit difficult to, to visualize because they're really far away, but we would expect these guys to also have like the wrinkles and the normal map information, which will bounce light slightly different. Should be able to kind of see it in a couple of areas right here. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it, guys. So you can see, look at that. That looks really, really, really cool. 
and uh, and we get a really really nice like distribution of all of these elements around our scene so that's it short video today guys um just wanted to show you this technique on how you can create your own texture with substance sampler and utilize it in a scene the next thing i'm gonna do here is i'm gonna go to my fox setup i'm gonna bring it back in like this it's definitely gonna take longer it might crash actually like now that i think of it i should have uh, closed the thing it might crash uh but i'm gonna do the render which is gonna be on the thumbnail with the final smoke we're probably gonna have one more but i think we're gonna do this in a in a live stream because yeah it just crashed uh because i i, I want to show you just like a little bit of post-production and stuff but uh yeah that's pretty much it guys please leave us a like and share subscribe if you like this content if there's anything else you want me to cover also let me know in the comments and i'll be happy to do so and uh make sure to check out the bundle it's only gonna be available until march 11th so if you want to get like super super good at seabrush this 17 courses are like the best deal ever guys so make sure to check it out thank you very much and i'll see you back on the next one Bye bye